Hi, well, I'm Professor Stephen Nashiba, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, changes in the Gibbs energy and its relationship to the Clausius inequality. And uh, for this uh, little chat, we're going to be assuming that the temperature and pressure are, are fixed. So, um, first idea that I, I want to just uh, get across here is that, by definition, uh, the Gibbs energy is equal to the enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. That's fine. And what that means uh, is that if I have a system that undergoes a change, let's say from x to y or y to x, then the change in the Gibbs energy will be equal to the change in the enthalpy. And um, since temperature is going to be held constant for that, I can write the change, the change in that second term as the temperature, which factors out, times the change in, um, in the entropy of the system. And what we've uh, previously seen is that uh, delta G for, at least for a reversible process at a constant temperature and pressure, is equal to the non-PV work. So that would be equals W, w prime there. Let's just take a moment to think about uh, how G changes and which one of these two states, X or Y, has the higher Gibbs energy. Well, um, I can tell by looking at this that if I were to, let's say, reversibly uh, move some of these molecules off to the right, as I uh, sort of crowded them up on the right here, um, that's going to take some work to do that because it's clear that this is the thermodynamically stable state. So uh, what that means is going from here to here, obviously W prime is, uh, is positive. And, uh, and of course what that means is that delta G is positive and going from Y to X, which must mean that this is the high, the high Gibbs energy state, and that would be the low G state. So I'm going from low Gibbs energy to high Gibbs energy. The second part of this that I want to argue for you is that um, the transition from a high Gibbs state to a low Gibbs state, which would correspond to, uh, well, if we carried it out reversibly, then I would say uh, W prime is, uh, is, is negative. Uh, that is to say, the system has the capacity of doing work on the surroundings. Or if we just uh, um, back off from that a second, it's, it's, um, even if it didn't do any work, it's clear that the, that the transition from X to Y would be spontaneous. And, uh, and since that's a high G state and that's a low G state, then what we're really arguing is that spontaneity is uh, associated with delta G being negative, that is, going from high G to low. I just want to argue that out through the Clausius inequality here. So Clausius says that for the system, uh, any change in the system uh, has, a, has an entropy change, and we know that that's um, greater than or equal to Q, that's the heat going in and out, uh, divided by the temperature of the surrounding. I, I've added this equal sign because um, in the, the, the inequality holds for spontaneous irreversible processes. The equality uh, holds for reversible processes. So I've just done a couple things in getting over here. I've said, well, that uh, the temperature of the system is the same as the temperature of the surrounding. It's all isothermal, so I can replace uh, that temperature of the surrounding with the temperature. Uh, I've also said that since uh, we're talking about an isobaric, isothermal uh, process, then I can replace Q with, uh, with delta H. And, uh, and so, uh, and, and I haven't really invoked um, reversibility only in the sense that there's mechanical equilibrium which allows me to uh, replace Q, Q with delta H. So I still have that inequality here. Now I've just uh, rearranged that T delta S being greater than or equal to delta H. Move that over to the uh, all onto one side. And so since we already know that delta G is delta H minus T delta S, that condition translates uh, into this inequality. So the idea here is that a spontaneous process is associated with negative delta G, and uh, and um, and a reversible non-spontaneous process is associated with uh, delta G equals zero. Okay.